Um, good morning. Uh, today we're going to represent European Federation geologists and we're going to speak about hydrogen in the energy transition. So European Federation of Geologists as an organization is going to be introduced by Glenn. Glenn, please uh, uh, let us know what uh, EFG is all about. Morning, everyone. So what is EFG, European Federation of Geologists? We represent the national associations of professional geologists in Europe. Um, we count uh, 27 countries at the moment, um, the latest being Malta. We have another one on the way, hopefully soon. Um, and we uh, are there to promote and advance the, the profession of geology and the interests of, of our members. Um, those national associations represent somewhere around 45,000 individual uh, geologists. And uh, we like to think of ourselves, if you like, as a, a kind of public relations agency for our profession in Europe. So we're also going to introduce ourselves. Uh, my name is uh, Pavlos Spirologu. I am also involved with the European Federation of Geologists as an external relations officer. I'm a board member, an executive board member. Uh, I'm an engineering geologist uh, by training. I have a master's degree on the same domain and also a PhD on environmental technical engineering. I have some two, 20 old years of uh, experience in uh, infrastructure projects uh, from UK to Madagascar, San Martin, Greece. I'm an expert also witness in uh, in uh, uh, in the Athens Public uh, Prosecutor's Office. And uh, further to that, uh, I'm also supporting EFG on uh, various uh, research projects for the European uh, Commission, uh, like uh, Horizon uh, Europe or EIT. And this involves, of course, uh, inception, uh, ideas, and uh, whenever we uh, we granted the project, I'm also involved with the implementation. And also, Glenn, uh, would you like also to say some few words about yourself? So I come with, uh, before I joined EFG, spent um, two decades working um, in the energy business uh, in uh, large, uh, large oil and gas projects as um, frontline geoscientist and, and then as a essentially a management consultant um, and as EFG's exec director uh, my priorities are really implementing our strategy uh, and responding to this extraordinary time we live in where we have a series of um, macro crises uh, all going on at once um, and one of the things which is foremost in our mind all, all the time um, is this energy transition. And for that we as professional geologists are there at the forefront and that uh, we are able to demonstrate our skills, uh, our tools um, and our expert, uh, expertise and experience and, and really uh, demonstrating that we can provide value. Okay, thank you. And I, I also want to add that uh, the rest of the board, it's also consisted by uh, professional geologists. So overall, European Federation of Geologists is a professional body that represents professional geologists and is being run by professional geologists themselves. Uh, going to the main topic of uh, our today's discussion, uh, uh, we're going to see how everything started and the way that we perceive it within the EFG. And everything started, I suppose, with a discussion on, on climate change and uh, discussions among governments, which eventually end up in, uh, into an agreement uh, that we reached at uh, Paris back in 2015 with uh, uh, the, the Paris Agreement. After several discussions within the European Union, of course, we reached the Green Deal, which is a way of uh, implementing uh, the Paris Agreement. And what I see here, uh, I have uh, put here as, uh, within the figure uh, things that uh, the Green Deal concerned and, of course, sparks from the climate change. And the most important for our today's talk is the clean energy, which is very closely uh, related to sustainable industry and, of course, eliminating pollution. Now, of course, to achieve the Green Deal, 
uh, you need tools. And one of the tools that is being devised by the European Commission comes uh, with the European Union taxonomy. And now the European Union taxonomy is, is a system that basically directs funds from financial institutions uh, to, uh, to a greener product. So for instance, if a financial institution, whatever that might be, uh, wants to uh, support and provide funds to an oil and gas industry, it basically gets uh, not good publicity. Whereas if it does the other way around, it will get well, uh, a good publicity and everybody tries to direct their funds towards a uh, greener product. So, uh, of course, uh, with uh, with the old traditional system of of, uh, of providing uh, converting energy, this is not the case anymore. And uh, moving to other means like renewable energy and uh, hydrogen is gonna play a pivotal uh, role into this. So this is this is in in a sense uh, what uh, the European Commission tries using several tools uh, to persuade uh, the society overall and we using also financial means uh, to move from uh, the traditional way of uh, converging energy to uh, a more sustainable and a much cleaner uh, way that has a clearly impact on, on climate change. And this, again, as we said, it, it, it's hydrogen. And uh, hydrogen, it, it's, uh, I mean, if you want to move to the renewable energy, uh, there are gonna be peaks and lows and whereas the energy demand is, is, is different from the conversion that is uh, being produced by this means. So basically you need to store energy. And uh, how are you going to store energy apart from the traditional way of batteries, which it says is in question, you're gonna need uh, hydrogen. You're gonna produce a lot of hydrogen by hydrolysis or maybe by uh, exploring for natural hydrogen, but certainly you need to store it. And you're not gonna need Certainly, big, big uh, methods. Uh, well, uh, big volumes actually to store hydrogen, and and this is uh, very important because then when there will be uh, low production uh, from renewable energy, then you can uh, draw back uh, the hydrogen that's been produced either by hydrolysis or by other various means or by natural hydrogen, uh, and and put it back into the system. So you have a stable electrical uh, grid system, but also you can use the hydrogen for other means like for transportation or the industry itself. And uh, what is being envisaged, and you can see it also on uh, uh, the Rand Hyde side uh, corner of, uh, of the slide, is that hydrogen is gonna pretty much uh, replace uh, the traditional fossil fuels uh, by 2074. And, and actually the process has already started. Um, so um, geology, how geology uh, is important to all those things and how we can support this uh, energy transition using hydrogen. Uh, as, of, as I spoke earlier on, I, I talked about uh, uh, that we need to produce massive amounts of hydrogen and we need to, going to need massive volumes uh, to store that uh, hydrogen. Um, and this is where geological hydrogen storage comes. It's, it's, it, it can provide the means to store this huge amount of energy. Uh, uh, and I will explain later on uh, various methods, uh, but also natural hydrogen. Uh, and, and you are experts also in the audience and you know that this exists. Not many people know until now, and you'll see many papers actually published back in, uh, few months ago that they say that uh, hydrogen is an energy carrier and natural hydrogen does not exist. Well, we prove them wrong. Uh, so natural hydrogen, again, is very important uh, because you need also geologists uh, to, to, to support the exploration, but also to find the first instances where it occurs and actually what is uh, the generation mechanism. All these are important uh, if you want to develop that, uh, that new domain. So geological storage, there are various methods to store uh, <clears throat> uh, hydrogen on, on the subsurface. Uh, if you want, and, and actually all these methods are complementary. Uh, they're not antagonizing themselves. So if you want to store, uh, for instance, uh, hydrogen for months, 
uh, a method is uh, using saline aquifers. So you can store huge amounts of hydrogen and also keep it there for strategic reserves. This is something very important as we saw over the recent month with, uh, uh, in a way, the energy crisis that is probably coming during the winter time. Uh, hydrogen also can be stored uh, on uh, salt caverns. This is a, a very much a mature technology, and there is a lot of projects actually uh, at the moment taking place all over Europe, how to develop salt caverns to identify the right uh, formation that they have the right thickness of salt so for salt caverns to be developed. Uh, and this is uh, salt caverns can be used on, on, a, on a monthly basis. Um, to, to draw hydrogen or uh, refill uh, the salt cavern whenever it's needed. And we can also use uh, lined rock storages. This is not as deep as salt caverns or uh, saline aquifers. Uh, and this is uh, where you want to store um, hydrogen uh, for use on a weekly basis or even on a daily basis. And also, similarly, another technology that exists is using mine shaft. Uh, to store hydrogen again, also for uh, daily usage, uh, up to up to weekly usage, and to do that, you need all sorts of knowledge coming from uh, the geological discipline, like structural geology, engineering geology, hydrogeology, geochemistry, just to name the list. Um, similarly, with uh, with uh, natural hydrogen, uh, uh, geological mapping putting uh, geologists out in the field and identify where actually uh, the right formation exists that we know they are uh, related with uh, nitro uh, hydrogen um, present. And also to understand how natural hydrogen uh, occurs and what the mechanisms are, what the chemistry is, uh, is it consumed, uh, is it not consumed, and all this uh, kind of information, it's a very important. Uh, and this is something that geologists understand and they can be of great support to the whole uh, industry, this new industry uh, that is, uh, will have a, a large uh, role to play on the energy transition. And also, uh, you can see here on, on the screen uh, a, a cross section, how uh, hydrogen occurs, but also uh, a figure where hydrogen occurs uh, within, uh, within Earth. And actually, this is also coming from uh, another speaker, which is going to be the next one after us. And, uh, and, 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 and now we're moving how we vision, how we position uh, geologists and EFG uh, on what I have already described. And uh, um, uh, I, I will uh, ask Glenn, because you have also quite a good experience on these things uh, to provide the insights of how we, within the EFG, are uh, thinking how we can uh, be, uh, as a geologist, uh, of support to this. As Pervo says, um, the hydrogen economy will not be possible without storage. So, um, as we've learned with natural gas, um, we need to always have a buffer because we cannot um, cope with the quantities of the gas that will be produced and use them. Um, we do not want to use them. And certainly, we are going to need to um, have a system which um, is able to compensate for the, the highs and lows of use. And so we are going to need a blend of uh, storage that copes from the short term to the long term. This is going to take planning. Um, these are the sorts of projects, best one in the world, are really decadal style projects. So we need to start thinking about them now um, with the thought that, um, go back to that diagram that uh, Pavel showed a couple of slides ago, um, hydrogen, we think, will be a significant energy vector in the decades to come. So we'd be very wise uh, to put these in place, opening up those projects. Um, as for natural hydrogen production, um, again, as Pablo said, that is something which is very new, um, even to most geologists. Um, there's still skepticism about it, uh, but it's something we most certainly 
should be looking for and at uh, because there is potentially a significant resource there. And to assess the size of that potential prize involves a convergence of different uh, geological disciplines um, and sectors. Uh, we have the exper experience and the expertise um, to attack this um, using disciplines from engineering geology, uh, hydrogeology, uh, structural geology, uh, the geophysics that's required to image structures required uh, for storage and that may hold uh, natural hydro resources. Okay. And uh, can you also explain just a bit how uh, the different disciplines converge within geology for uh, the uh, storage, but also for the natural uh, hydrogen exploration? Because there is a, there's a, a huge potential for, for different disciplines within the geological domain uh, to bring all the knowledge and combined uh, to this new, relatively new domain. In terms of um, the hydrogen storage aspects, um, it is a more demanding molecule to store than uh, natural gas, but it is doable and we uh, know how to do it already, whether it be in a, a salt cavern or in those deeper um, aquifers. Um, so we would use the, the standard techniques we've used up to now um, with an enhanced uh, monitoring uh, regime and slightly higher standards because of the the mobility of that that molecule but um that is uh, something we know how to do as for natural hydrogen well um although it's a new molecule to go look for um we already have helium exploration and production we know how to do that um and it essentially it's an interesting mix of the mining and geothermal industry and oil and gas and using the um, the, the practices, uh, the the skills, and the technology of those those uh, different uh, sectors, because the natural hydrogen plays, exploration plays that we know about, there's about half a dozen of them, um, are essentially hard rock plays. Uh, so much uh, something very familiar to the mining world in particular, um, and. Those skills and technology can be applied. Uh, the business itself, it being a gas that you're producing, um, will look very much like uh, production uh, petroleum does. So we're going to have different uh, people who are not used to working with each other. Um, who are going to be combining their skills and experience here. Um, and that's going to be very interesting. Um, and it means a very useful uh, transfer of skills uh, and competences um, as petroleum slowly diminishes and we are moving to these these new forms of uh, energy. Lovely. Well, uh, that's you have it today from EFG. Uh, do stay connected if you want. Uh, this is uh, my email and uh, Glenn's email. Uh, if you want uh, to collaborate further in the future or you have any questions, please do get in touch. Uh, we will be very happy to hear from you. Thank you very much.